chef Lois Ellen Frank, and I want to talk to you about beans. Beans are an integral ingredient in plant-based cooking, and I have a lot of varieties here. I like to cook my beans from scratch, and I use a slow cooker, but you can also get canned beans. Canned beans are a convenience food. They're a lot more expensive, so I try and not use them as much, and unfortunately, canned beans also have salt. So if you want a less expensive, better way to make beans, I'm going to show you how I do that. I make beans at least once a week, and I like to cook them in my slow cooker. So what I do is I take four cups of beans, and I'll fill my crock pot with water, I'll bring it to a boil, turn it down to low, go to sleep. The next morning I wake up and I have the most amazing beans, and they can be used in any recipe. I'm going to show you. So we start with, for instance, kidney beans. These are the dry version right here. And then once they cook, these are better than canned beans. You can see how perfectly plump they are. I've got really nice juice, which I like to use uh, because I can use that bean juice to saute in. But I just want to talk briefly about some of these beans that are indigenous. Beans, of course, going back thousands of years, very important to native people. And if we start, so a bean is a legume, and if we look at like a split pea or a lentil, which are also very, very tasty, they don't need to be soaked, they don't need to absorb as much water as other beans. Here we have a variety of beans, and I've got a kidney bean, which is one of my favorite. They turn dark, and they're delicious, and they're very meaty. The pinto, which is probably the most famous and the most common. Again, it plumps up, it's really nice. And then we start to have some other indigenous beans. Here we have a Anasazi bean. The term Anasazi actually meaning the ancient ones or those that have been here before. And these beans turn almost like a, a light egg color. They're light brown, they're very beautiful. And we also have here a tepary. Now, a tepary bean comes, it originated from the Tohono O'odham people. These are people that live to the south in southern Arizona. And this bean actually is higher in protein than any other bean on the planet. We actually think that this bean is going to have a big future in terms of nutrition and all of the wonderful flavors. And the Tohono Otam people have actually started to reintroduce this bean. They planted this bean. So the tepary beans it comes in white and it also comes in brown. And this very small bean, but it's absolutely a delicious bean. I make hummus from it. I make a bean terrine. I do a lot with the two colors. And I actually like to cook them separately and then bring them in as different components in a color. And then what I also have here is a black and white bean. This is also called a cattle bean sometimes. This is an heirloom bean. And what I mean by heirloom is that actually these beans could actually be planted and we could use these in our garden to grow beans. So beans very, very important in Native American foods, in the history, and in the cooking. They're delicious and they're nutritious.